I remember the day my older sister died. She died on June 27, 1950, mere hours before the North Korean Communist Army invaded my hometown. Our neighbors were fleeing, but with my sister just dead in the house, we could not do so. I was 17 then, and my baby sister barely three. When the night fell, the bombing became more intense. Bombs exploded all around us, and bullets flew everywhere. A sultry night, I remember, but cold in our terror. We waited for the nightmare to end, but it went on and on with no letter. That night, Seoul, the capital of South Korea, fell. How was I to know then that just two hours up north in the city of Chuncheon, this is Seoul and this is Chuncheon, a young missionary, Irish, was summarily executed on the side of the road by North Korean troops. Father Tony Collier was a member of the missionary group known as the Columban Fathers in Korea since 1933. Back in Ireland, his parents, family, and friends grieved that a young missionary's life was so cruelly cut short in this way. A U.S. Army officer and other friends had urged the Columban fathers to flee, but Father Collier and his colleagues chose to remain. They wanted to share the fate of their people in their darkest and most desperate hours. For this to choice, they were to pay an ultimate price. It was a decision of courage and love, which the people of Korea never forgot. In these brave men, who did not abandon them in their hours of peril, their villagers and parishioners saw the Good Shepherd of the Gospel exemplified. In the villages of Samchok and Mukho, in the province of Kangon, two other Columbans were dragged from their houses, tortured, and interrogated for three long days before they were finally executed. That was the fate of Father James McGinn in Samchuk Parish and Father Patrick Riley in Mukko. They were abandoned where they fell without dignity or burial. Meantime, again in the city of Chuncheon, Father Philip Crosby, Father Frank Canavan just arrived on the mission and Monsignor Thomas Quinlan were arrested. They were taken off by the retreating North Korean forces. Thus, these three men began what came to be known as the infamous death march to the prison camps in North Korea. The winter of 1950 was one of the coldest in record. Many prisoners who were in company with our three Columbans did not survive the cold and hunger that plagued them during their long and tortuous journey across the frozen landscape. Father Canavan subsequently died in December from malnutrition. He told his cellmates that he would have his Christmas dinner in heaven. Father Crosby and Monsignor Quinlan were to spend three long years in those terrible North Korean camps before their final release and repatriation.
during all that time, these men did not know what became of their Columban colleagues. From the city of Mokpo, three more Columban fathers were taken. Monsignor Patrick Brennan from Chicago and Fathers John O'Brien and Thomas Cusack from Ireland are believed to have perished in the massacre that took place in Taejeon. The, three the remains of three Columbans from Mokpo were never found. For the heartbroken families of these three brave men, there has been no closure to their grief. It's a terrible story, or tragic one. Somehow, the last lines of Francis Thompson's Daisy come to my mind. Nothing begins and nothing ends that is not paid with a moan. For we are born in others' pain and perish in our own. Yes, I suppose we, all of us, are born in the pain of someone else. The fate of many Koreans, thousands, perhaps millions, God alone knows, was born in the pain of these men, their pain of love. Surely it was love, because love can only be bought with the last coin we have. Thank you, fathers.